Italian anti-tank missile carrier definitely looks unusual, but the basic principle stays the same for all ground vehicles in War Thunder. It must be able to destroy the red team. And by looking at how lovely the gunner hugs the ATGM launcher, you know that it is able and willing to reduce the amount of players in enemy team. ATGM launcher fires missiles. Only missiles. So you don't have that much flexibility when choosing ammunition. But that is not necessarily a bad thing. Just like high explosive anti-tank shells, ATGMs are equipped with heat warheads, which means they can penetrate almost any armor at any reasonable angle. Only reactive and composite armor can reliably resist such projectiles but vehicle's battle rating is too small to face tanks with composite armor and reactive armor is quite rare anyway. So most of the time every missile will do some damage depending on what kind of vehicle it hits. If that's a medium tank or something heavier, you might need few hits as the post penetration damage is not that big. But at this vehicle's battle rating you will fight a lot of light tanks and when hit, those will be instantly hull broken, which makes the high cal machine gun on this vehicle rarely useful. But the most important difference of ATGM is that projectile doesn't follow ballistic trajectory. Instead, it follows your crosshair, which makes it very easy to hit very distant targets. That is one of the most significant advantages of this vehicle. Usually, I was trying to take a high ground to have good overview of the map and snipe opponents from a safe distance. But it's very important to have the element of surprise, because your missile flies few times slower than usual tank projectiles, only at 300 meters per second. Sometimes opponents appear in front of you for a brief moment when passing through open area to the next cover and the missile might not even be able to reach the target in time. If you see that happening, better send the missile away so you don't attract opponents attention, because it becomes even worse when enemies become aware of you. They will have plenty of time to get back to cover when they notice your missile or even can try to shoot it down with machine guns. That will simply waste your missile. And every missile counts when you can take only 10 of them into battle. Engaging in a fight with opponent that is expecting your attacks can quickly leave you with no ammo. By being closer to action, slow missile's velocity won't be an issue, but other problems will appear. First of all, there are plenty of vehicles with stabilizers that will be able to shoot immediately as they see you. And you cannot fire a missile before stopping or at least slowing down to 3 kph. Additionally, it will take quite a while to reload the weapon. With Ace Crew, reload is 10 seconds. That's longer than almost every tank you will face, so if you miss, you can be overrun easily when opponents are close. Limited horizontal guidance will also become a bigger problem in close engagements. Launcher is directed towards vehicle's front and can rotate 45 degrees to each side. That's wide enough angle to be comfortable, since opponents rarely pop up right behind you. But in those rare cases, when you are flanked and your engine is disabled, be aware that your vehicle's expiration date is very close. In addition to limited horizontal guidance, rotation speed is also relatively slow. With this crew it's 18 degrees per second. When you stay away from where main action is happening, it's not going to be an issue. But when you play on city maps or somewhere else where you cannot maintain distance, 
This might become bigger issue as almost all your opponents will have fast turret rotations. Vertical guidance is much better. Elevation of 25 degrees is quite usual, it allows to attack helicopters, but depression is something impressive. If 10 degrees for usual tanks is considered good, imagine how well you can play hull down with 20 degrees of launcher's depression. Hull down is very useful, especially considering vehicle's survivability, which is disputable. On one hand, it is hull breakable and its armor is made of aluminium, which is less effective. The only reason why it can resist high cal machine gun fire is angled frontal plate. But if someone attacks you from any other direction, it is very likely that opponent won't even need to use his main gun. Additionally, the gunner heroically stands on top of the vehicle with no protection at all, which makes him extremely vulnerable to everything. Get ready to gunner getting randomly knocked out because of artillery strikes on the other side of a map. On the other hand, that same gunner noticeably sticks above the vehicle, so you can hide entire vehicle behind other objects and still have clear line of fire. Additionally, sticking out crew member is not exactly what opponents are expecting to see, so as long as you don't move, there is a good chance that you will stay unnoticed even when enemy knows exactly where to look. So ironically, by exposing the most vulnerable crew member, the whole vehicle has better chances to survive. If Italian Tech Tree is known for fast wheeled vehicles, this one is one of the exceptions. Missile carrier reliably reaches speed of 40 kph and on roads or when moving down hills it can accelerate up to 64. Overall the speed is not bad, but at these battle ratings all nations have at least few fast vehicles, so you won't have any real advantage. Reverse is 14 kph, which is again not bad, but nothing special. What I do like about the vehicle's mobility is how quickly it can turn. That is especially useful knowing that horizontal guidance is limited and slow. So turning is vital to be able to attack opponents in the first place and you can compensate slow traverse speed to put your crosses on the opponent faster. The vehicle also maintains some mobility while swimming which is almost never useful because the speed drops significantly and some maps don't even have water at all. In arcade, this vehicle was a complete disaster. Because of name tags, it is difficult to get opponents by surprise. They will have enough time to hide when they see your slow missile coming their way, making your attacks ineffective or even completely useless if opponents are hiding behind bushes or trees. Assuming you have only 10 missiles in total, you can quickly end up having no ammo. Additionally, it's harder in arcade to destroy non-hull breakable tanks because of crew replenishment mechanics, which makes your long reload even bigger issue. And additionally, your advantage in long-range accuracy is minimized since everyone gets penetration indicator anyway. Everyone except you. While aiming at opponents, you can't even see their silhouettes. The only two helpful things are gun's depression and that launcher is mounted above the vehicle. Both of these things will help you with camping, which is the only viable option for this vehicle. But get ready that opponents will drop artillery strikes on your position, which makes camping dangerous for your hull breakable vehicle and especially for gunner, even without meeting any opponents. Vehicle feels very average because it doesn't have any unique features that would affect the gameplay significantly. I don't say that it's bad, but at similar battle rating Italian Tech Tree has more effective vehicles. I would rate it 4 drivers with broken expectations out of 10. 
It is mostly useful on very large maps with hills where you can take advantage of long range accuracy of ATGMs and good guns depression. Otherwise, on smaller maps, vehicle has too many disadvantages. This missile carrier is nice addition in your lineup to respawn when your main vehicle is destroyed, but I wouldn't take it as a first pick in most cases. I already made review on another Italian vehicle, Centauro. That is an example of vehicle I would take as a first pick. You can check its review in top left corner to see how different it is from this missile carrier and use the remaining seconds to make sure that subscribe button below this video is not red anymore.